Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, today we're having a quick look at the uh, Funk Amateur uh, Dynamic Compressor Kit uh, version 2.0, I believe I've got, uh, from Funk Amateur. Uh, I believe they're out of Germany. Uh, now, with the intentions of doing some uh, QRP work, um, I went and did a SOTA activation uh, with a fellow amateur the other week. I thoroughly enjoyed it and looking at getting into doing some, some soda work there and some uh, some park activations, etc. Um, now to make the most out of the 5 watt output um, of the FT817 um, and you know to give yourself the best chance of making contacts, when I was having the chat with the operator VK2YK, uh, he had the mic compressor and he also had a little uh, 45 watt amplifier uh, that he ran uh, with, his, with his 817 during his activation. And one of the questions I asked him was, if you had the choice between the mic compressor uh, and the amplifier, which one would you get? His response was, get the amplifier. But, with one caveat, the amplifier comes in around about $250. Uh, that being said, you need some additional stuff with that. Uh, obviously, you're going to need to power the amplifier. Then he said, keeping that in mind, uh, you know, you're probably looking at about 300 bucks for that. The mic compressor itself is about 50 bucks. And there's no reason not to have it, so go grab that first. So I decided to go out and get the kit. Uh, I think it arrived in less than two weeks. Thanks very much to the uh, guys there at Funk Amateur for getting it to me quickly. I don't believe there are any other online instructions on how to put it together. Uh, so you're gonna go through this with me and hopefully will be successful. So going on product details, says it's easy to build, which is good news because I'm not particularly practiced uh, in electronics, don't particularly understand them. Uh, but this is one of the reasons I get a kit, why not jump in the deep end. Instructions have got some nice images there. Uh, so you'll see some images there on the main page, uh, which is good. That's going to give us something to work with. Uh, worst comes to worst, if you don't understand the electronics, just look at the images and make it happen the same way. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the, the, the board, uh, it's got the DYC X, sorry, 8X7. Uh, version 1402 which shows you the orientation of the board uh, and then you can pretty much work from that. Now one other thing I wasn't aware of when I purchased this uh, was that it says um, it contains a simple AF generator. It says this can be used to generate a stable test tone for tuning antennas, ATUs or linear amplifiers etc. It says generator is activated by pressing down the button on the microphone while the PTT is already depressed. Um, so the down button at the top of the microphone, which would normally uh, change frequencies or channels in memory mode, says it can be done with one hand, um, and obviously that saves you having to whistle, etc., into the microphone, switch over to packet FM, AM, or something like that uh, for tuning purposes. Uh, so very handy. Uh, wasn't aware of that, but that should uh, be quite useful. Okay, so that's basically uh, the manual, and we'll jump into the box and have a look what's in there now. Okay, so good question is, what's in the box? Uh, it did come double box, so you can see there. And I was really surprised to open up and actually see uh, you know, a nice a glossy box. Uh, this is the same manual that you're going to get online, uh, which is electronic, but you know, for the sake of, again, for your 45 bucks, uh, to receive a you know nice shiny printed manual, which will you know go in with all my other amateur radio manuals that uh, never to be seen again. Uh, but yeah, I was really impressed with that. Okay, so there's the case. Uh, interestingly enough. Uh, it doesn't actually screw together, so it looks just to be a press fit. Uh, so when you get the case, you can just uh, separate it, just you know, get a fingernail or something in there and just pull it apart. So that's good to know, you're not going to bugger it up if you just uh, pull it apart like that. Okay, so uh, we've got the little, I think that, that is it? The little chip, I see, is that what they call that? Uh, so there we go. Now put these in the case so we don't lose it. Now that's in a little foam piece uh, so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the actual board itself, uh, so that's excellent, all wrapped up and bubble wrapped. Uh, and I'm not even going to pretend what these are. Uh, these appear to be, well, I am going to pretend. Uh, these appear to be pots of some description. Uh, hopefully you can see that. There's two of those. Pop that up. I believe this is our little surface mount capacitor. Uh, so you can see that there, hopefully you can see that there. Here is our switch as well. So, just to give you an idea, uh, if you're having a look at the images, 
there's the switch. So there's the switch in relation to the size of the actual image. So there's the uh, surface mount uh, pads. So that should be fairly simple. What happened to so is that the, uh, the RJ45 uh, sockets aren't uh, actually soldered as well. So we're gonna need to do that. Uh, now I don't have that fine a soldering tip on my soldering iron. Uh, so it's interesting that they're not soldered in, but uh, we'll give those a go anyway. So I might just do those first, um, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so interestingly enough, just going through the manual now, uh, what I am actually noticing is that there isn't uh, a great deal of uh, instruction on how to put it together. And actually how to show you how to put it together. Now there is a schematic, uh, which we can see here. Um, so really, we shouldn't be able to get this wrong. Uh, I think those potentiometers, I think that's what they're called, uh, they appear to be identical. Uh, they don't appear to be any different, I don't think. Okay, so we've put the pots in. Uh, they were fairly straightforward. Um, there are obviously three points on them, and there's two points where there are two spots where there are three holes, so you need to solder those up. Now we're just moving on to the circuit. Uh, sorry, the, the little chip. Uh, which drops through those holes nicely but what you actually find is it's fairly low profile so when you flip the board over it's just going to fall straight out so what you need to do is actually get something that you can put under the board while you flip it over to hold that in place and I've found just a USB thumb drive uh, works sufficiently um, I am a little bit concerned because there's a lot of little surface mount stuff around here and you can see there's some surface mount stuff there and you can see the size of my soldering tip um, which is quite large um, we're gonna have to see how we go now let's have a go at this little surface mount capacitor so again just using the manual putting the board in the same orientation there is some riding on the back of this and I'm coming over that's not exactly what we wanted to see um, the writing on the board is different um, to what's on the back of the chip but there is good news um, now I don't know again don't know a great deal about electronics but quite often you'll find there's an identifier uh, on the component or whatever you're using uh, and luckily enough on the end of this one I'm not sure if you're going to see that there is a stripe and you can see it down the bottom there uh, now there is a stripe on the board uh, sorry on the manual on the board there as well or on that unit so Albeit that the writing has changed, say, easy enough to find the orientation uh, of the piece on the board. And we'll pop it on. You can see, look, for as far as the surface mount thing, this is massive. Uh, in retrospect, if I knew then what I know now, I may have done these central uh, pieces first. So I'm not trying to move around uh, these pots on the outside, but which is fairly large and we should be okay. I'm just going to try and get myself some room to work here I just want to get some solder on it just to hold it in place basically we might just put some on that pad first keep in mind I've not done any surface mount stuff before now put that on that pad Keeping in mind the orientation, just going to heat that up, in theory. Just going to heat that pad up, and then slide that in there. And that looks ugly, but we've got some decent contact there. In theory, we can just let the solder heat up that pad up there and we are golden um, okay so that's pretty straightforward um, woohoo that's my first surface mount component and I'm just looking to make sure I've got the orientation correct and we have so that's pretty straightforward and the last thing to do is the switch uh, now the switch really probably shouldn't make too much difference but uh, it sits proud of the board so it's going to go oh, not that way it's going to go that way into the board again just purely working off the uh, 
off the manual. This is how I clean my tip, just a piece of uh, piece of tissue, toilet paper in fact. Uh, just a bit of spit on it, a bit of clean up there. Oh, I'll give you a little bit of these. We're done. Um, again, not super happy with some of those solder points. I think that looks okay. Just having a quick look at all the bits we had to solder on. Again, some of them aren't the prettiest, but I think we're going to get away with that. So that's it, that's everything put together. Um, now obviously I need to get this all connected and uh, hook it up to the 817. Uh, but we'll worry about that a little bit later on. Uh, now I'm just having a quick look uh, on the actual sticker. Just wondering which way this needs to plug in. Uh, there is actually a sticker which says microphone and uh, radio there. Um, I'm just gonna have a look and see if we can identify how we actually put that on, how that goes together. To go in this way now there are some holes obviously for that board to slip in it drops in there nicely uh, hole for the switch and it is just a press fit but we figured it out so if you have a look at the front picture there I'm not sure if you can see that um, you can actually see there's the box there and we can see that there's no switch on this side so we need to have it facing away from us um, so actually the switch is actually going to be facing well, well we'll do it for the purpose of the picture so no switch and you can see the RJ45 is pointed down which means it needs to go that way so there we go work in front of the camera. So there we go, so that's pretty straightforward. So, uh, just to try and get that right again. Switch away, RJ45 pointed down, sticker goes on like that. Sticker on, box complete, jobs are good. Okay, uh, that's it guys, I'm not gonna test it today. I, I don't have the means, I've got pretty much everything packed away as far as my radio gear. Uh, so I don't have anything that I can test it on at the moment. Um, give me about a week or so and I'll get the opportunity to get uh, some antennas back up in the air. We've had some pretty bad storms come through here so uh, I've pulled everything down. Thanks very much for sticking around guys. I know it's probably been a fairly long video but uh, hopefully this will help anybody that wants to put one together and uh, do it themselves. Thanks very much guys. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll get back to you with some tests soon. Cheers.